In this video, we're looking at complex numbers and changing complex numbers from rectangular form into polar form. So the three examples we're looking at written down here, in the first one, we're going to look at where A is a positive number, so A plus BI. The second example, we're going to look at one where the A is a negative number, so it's done slightly different. And then the third one is when we don't know the A. So three slightly different examples to look at here. So let's look at the first one. So the question wants to express the following complex number in polar form. So root three plus i. So when we're expressing our complex number in polar form, so let's just give this complex number a name. Imagine it was called z. When we're writing our complex number in polar form, it's going to be expressed as complex number z is equal to or times cos theta plus i sine theta. So there's two things there you can see we need. We need to figure out what or stands for and we need to figure out what the theta stands for. So when I'm doing these questions, no harm to just do a quick sketch, first of all, of your original complex number, um, just so you can see where it's located on the Argand diagram. So it's, it's root three plus one i, which would be located maybe around here. It's in quadrant one. And I connect to the center. Now that length from the center out to my complex number z is known as or, the radius, or in other words, the modulus of the complex number. And the formula for finding that length or the modulus of a complex number is known as the square root of a squared plus b squared. So that'll get you the length of or, the modulus. So I take my complex number. My complex number is root three plus one i. And I'm just gonna label those two parts. So I'm gonna call the root three my a and the number in front of the i, b. And I sub them into my formula. So or is equal to the square root of root three all to be squared plus b, which is one all to be squared. Root three multiplied by root three is three and one by one is one. So or is going to equal to the square root of four, which is two. So the length of that line from the origin out to z is two units. The next thing we need to find is the angle here, the angle between that uh, coordinate, that point that I've drawn and the real axis. So I'm looking for theta now. And in order to find theta, we are going to use our trigonometric ratios and in particular, we're using tan. So to get theta, it's the inverse of tan. So tan inverse of B over A or it could be written as y over x, depending on what letters you're using. So that means theta is equal to tan inverse of b, which is one over root three. And then I need to be careful now, if you're using your calculator in radians or degrees, so it depends on uh, what your particular question is wanting you to do. If I'm going to degrees, just make sure your calculator is set to degrees. So theta will come out as 30 degrees for you. Or if you set your calculator in radians, theta will come out as one over six pi, so pi over six. So just be careful with which way the question is asking you to express it. But in this example, I'm gonna to work to both. So therefore, in order now to express my complex number in polar form, which is or times cos theta plus i sine theta, it's going to be or, which is two, times cos theta, which is 30 degrees, plus i sine theta, which is also 30 degrees. And that's our answer. Let's just put it in radians as well. It would be two times cos of pi over six, plus i sine pi over six. And that's example one. So express the following complex number in polar form. So my complex number is uh, z is equal to minus root three plus one i. And I'm just gonna write down underneath them, the real part is A and the imaginary part is B. And I now want to express that in polar form, which is written as Z is my complex number, or times cos of theta plus I sine of theta. Now, if we just look at our complex number, first of all, on the Argand diagram, so I have my reals and my imaginaries, I'm going back uh, root three and up one i. So it's probably around here. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the right location. It's just to help me draw it. So that line from the origin to the coordinate z is radius, so or, or modulus, we'll know that in a couple of minutes. 
And then I'm looking for the angle here, which is theta or also known as the argument. The argument is the angle. So I need to go off now and find or and theta in order to put it into my polar form. So in order to find or, we're using our modulus formula, which is a squared plus b squared. So or is equal to the square root of negative root three all to be squared. Just put that in brackets if you're using your calculator just to make sure that it squares the negative. So or is equal to positive three plus one, which is root of four and the square root of four is two. So put simply the radius or the modulus of this complex number is two. I'm now going to go off and find my angle, my argument, which is found by finding the tan inverse of y over, or sorry, b over uh, a, which is also the same as y over x, depending on the letters you're using, but let's stick with b and a for this one. So filling that in, I get theta is equal to tan inverse of one over negative root three. And when I type that into my calculator, in degrees, it's coming up as negative 30 degrees. Or if you're working in radians, it's coming up as negative pi over 6. So it's up to you whether you're using degrees or radians. I'm just going to do it out in both forms for this question. Now, if I come over to my diagram and mark in negative 30 degrees, negative 30 degrees is down around here. It's not technically what I want. I want the positive uh, angle. So nine times out of 10, when you do these questions in an exam, it's going to ask you to write it uh, in the form of zero to 360 degrees. So what I have to do now is basically find the reference angle for negative 30. I want to basically uh, find the equivalent angle to negative 30. And you can probably see from my diagram that it's 150 degrees, because if I just come over to my diagram here, this angle in here is also going to be 30 degrees. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going back 30 degrees from this real axis, which is 180 degrees. So that real axis is 180 degrees. So if I basically go 180 degrees minus 30, it'll bring me back to 150 degrees. And that's basically what I want to find. So in other words, my angle is not negative 30. I want to use angle as 150 degrees. Another way you can look at that is basically, take a look at the picture. This straight line must add up to 180 degrees. I've already marked on 30 degrees, so the remaining green angle must be 150. So a quick way of looking at that is basically uh, add on 180 degrees to your negative 30, which brings me to 150 degrees. So there's many different ways you can kind of get to your 150 degrees. So there's two or three different ways. If I'm using it in uh, radians, my angle would equal to um, the equivalent will be uh, five pi over six, won't it? So we'll write that in as well. So five pi over six. So now I'm coming down to my final answer. So my complex number or is equal to, or sorry, or times cos theta plus i sine of theta is giving me or, which is my modulus, which is two, times cos theta, which is 150 degrees, plus i sine 150 degrees. Or if we are working in radians, it will be two times cos of five pi over six, plus i sine uh, five pi over six. So just make sure your calculator is in degrees or radians, depending on what way the question is asking you at home. Let's now look at example three. So express the following complex number in polar form, four i. So first of all, I'm just gonna write down the name of my complex number. So I'm gonna call it z, which is four i. Now that's also the same as zero plus four i. So my real part there, my a in other words, is going to be my zero and my imaginary part, my b, is going to be four i. So I'm just writing it with a real and an imaginary. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is like all complex numbers when I'm putting them into polar form, I would sketch that on my Argand diagram. So I'm going to draw my real and my imaginary axes, and I'm gonna label the coordinate zero four i. So I'm not going anywhere on my reals, but I'm going up to four i on my imaginary. So that's the complex number four i, or z in other words. 
So as you look at that, you can see that the distance from the origin up to that complex number has a distance of four units. But let's go and find that an alternative way. Let's find that using our modulus formula and just prove it. So our modulus formula uh, for the length of the radius is the square root of a squared plus b squared. And if I fill that in, my a is going to be my real part, which is zero squared. My b is my imaginary part, which is four squared, which is giving me zero plus 16, which is radius of 16 and the square root of 16 is four. So we basically just proved that the radius or the distance from the center to the point Z is four units. The next thing now I need to do is go off and find uh, the theta, the argument of the complex number. Because remember when we're expressing complex numbers here, we want our complex number to be in the form or times cos of theta plus i sine of theta. That's what we want to do. That's how we must express our complex number. Now we found our or, but we now need to find theta, the angle. And the angle, if we look at our picture, is from the real axis back to my complex number. So this is the angle here in green that I'm basically looking for. Now we can tell by looking at the picture that that angle must be 90 degrees. We can tell that from looking at the uh, the Argon's diagram because the real and the imaginary axis intersect at a 90 degree. Now, normally we would use our tan inverse to prove that. We would go tan inverse of B over A. So our theta would equal to tan inverse uh, B, which would be four over zero. But we should hopefully know that we can't divide by zero. So if I type that now in my calculator, it will come up as an error or maths error or undefined on your calculator. So by, by using our calculator, it's not allowing us to find the size of the angle, but by drawing it and sketching it, we can actually see that the size of that angle, theta, is in fact 90 degrees. So now we basically want to put that into our complex number, our polar form. Now, just if you are doing this in radians, that's the same as pi over two. So just make sure your calculator is set in degrees or radians um whichever way you're doing it just remember that uh 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi so that's how we're working backwards there so final step is to write my complex number in polar form which is or times cos theta plus i sine theta which is going to give me or which is my modulus of 4 times cos angle which is argument which is 90 degrees plus i sine of 90 degrees and that's the same as if we want to go in radians, four times cos of pi over two plus i sine pi over two. And that's our complex number into polar form complete.